Welcome back! In this video we are flying an uncrewed test mission for the first crewed orbit. You will see an awesome recreation of a Mercury upper stage. We'll perform one full orbit and then get some really beautiful re-entry effects. Let's go! So first let's see where we stand at our program. The crewed orbit program. We have already one contract done, that is the reach orbital speed and return safely. I guess we did that already when we did the X-15 mission. And obviously we will do the next in line, which is the orbital test flight in uncrewed. Preparation for the next contract, which will be the first orbital flight, a crewed one. The exact requirements for the contract are, we have to have place for one crew member, but not have a crew member on board, right? It's an uncrewed test. Also, we can not have any not rated for re-entry parts on the craft. We need to get to an orbit above 150 kilometers and we need to stay in that orbit for an hour and 27 minutes, which of course is exactly one rotation, one orbit. Let me now hand over to on-stream Gottjen, who will explain the rocket in detail to you. That is approximately 4 minutes, so if you are not so interested in the details of the rocket and just want to see the mission, then just skip ahead that chapter. Let's open my uncurbed orbit test Mark II. And this is it. Can we zoom out a bit? No. Okay, so let's start at the top this time. So at the very top we have the Mercury Launch Escape System. So RP-1 offers like the Mercury parts to rebuild an actual Mercury. So we have the Launch Escape System. Below that very interesting. We have the MDCAM nose unit that contains a drag chute, for example. And even more interesting, remove that. You can see here the Mercury landing and control module, which provides, for example, RCS. But what I had so much, I, it took me so long to, to find that, and that is this parachute thingy here. Can I even remove this now? Without... I can't. But as you can see... Uh, where is it? This one. This part here. Only this. This was missing. And you need to insert the parachute from the top. Crazy. That took me minutes to find that. So below that we have the actual Mercury capsule with place for one crew member. Let's quickly remove the Atlas adapter. We're not usually really using an Atlas rocket, but something similar I would say. Because under that we have the heat shield, obviously, Mercury class heat shield. And we have the Mercury retro pack with Three Mercury retro engines. This is going to do the retrograde burn to deorbit us. And then we detached. So then we have the adapter. And below is a pretty straightforward, let's say, two stage rocket to get us into orbit. This one stage is powered by a Juno engine and provides uh, how much? 3700 Delta V. And the next stage or the first stage with some radially attached tanks consists of 1, 2, 3. LR87 LH2 engines. They provide 6100 Delta V, and in combination, it is almost 10,000, which is enough to get this thing into orbit nicely. 
with some spare room because I think later we need to add some crew survivability thingies. We'll see, we'll see. So that's the rocket. And there we have it on the launch pad. Beautiful. Let's look at the launch from some different perspectives. Love these sonic booms. And here we go with the first stage separation. And welcome to orbit. So here on the top right we can see that we have check marks on most of the mission criteria already. Now we just need to be in this orbit for an hour and 27 minutes. Let's get rid of the launch escape system, we don't need that one anymore. And also the second stage is not needed anymore. Let's time warp through this orbit to a nice sunrise. Just beautiful. Isn't it beautiful? Look at the stage in the background, the second stage still floating behind us. And guys, where do we want to land? I picked South Africa. And now I will hand over to OnStream Gottchen once more who will explain to you a nice gimmick on the Mercury. Also some interesting thing that the Mercury capsule has is, look at the top, oh no, not the flickering, <laughs> look at the top here when I hit the brakes. <laughs> it has that thing. And that apparently was a thing that they did in case you entered not with the heat shield first, but the other way around, then you could hit this thing, it would destabilize the rocket and it would then hopefully flip around and you would be facing heat shield first again. <laughs> All right. So nice, nice thing. Yeah, it's a really nice, nice gimmick. The description, <laughs> the description is saying, I'm not sure if it does anything at all, but it looks cool. All right, let's finish this orbit. that we're here, we can perform our deep orbit burn. Here comes the second stage again. Short visit. And now we don't need the bottom part below the heat shield anymore. All right, re-entry, here we come. Prepare for some awesome visual effects. And there is the coast of Africa on the horizon. Welcome to Africa. And if you look very closely now, you can see the first re-entry heating. Plasma building up. This is, of course, all courtesy to the awesome Firefly mod. Amazing.
Oh my god, what has happened? Why? <laughs> In simulation it worked perfectly. Well, I found the issue and we will see it soon. Glad we are in a video game and we can just quick load. So I forgot to set our board computer to retrograde there in the middle with the smart assist. We see it now I did it. Pointing retrograde perfectly. If you do not point perfectly retrograde, the heat, the plasma will crawl through somewhere on the side and overheat one of the stuff of the parts behind the heat shield. Which is not good. And soon we should be through the burst. We can see plasma reducing already. And here we are. We made it. We survived. And after a final sonic boom, we can descend to the ground. The first thing to open, of course, is the drag chute, and after that we will see the main chute opening, which will slow us down to, if I remember correctly, 8 or 9 meters a second. There we go. And now, I don't know if you have known this, but the Mercury heat shield has something called a landing bag, which we can deploy. And look what happens when we do that. Boing! <laughs> this is a nice cushion for our touchdown with our 8 meters a second. Let's watch it. And here we are. Everything is still intact and I think we did a successful test mission for our next mission, the crude orbit. Should be safe. And on the top right we can already see the notification for the successful completion of the contract. Orbital test flight. Awesome. And also we can see that the contract has successfully completed. In the last video, I mentioned that I was finally able to enable the channel membership, super thanks, super chat, etc. features here on YouTube. I would never ever have imagined that already before the next video goes online, I would already get my first supporter. So please, let's all give some love to Space Junkie, the very first supporter of this channel. You will forever have a place in my heart and be a massive milestone in the history of this channel. I know Space Junkie for a long time already. He has been watching and liking my videos, watching my streams, chatting with us and writing comments since like forever. He also gifted 5 subs to random subscribers. YouTube only allows you to gift random subscribers. So if you are one of them listed here, you got a notification and please send some love to Space Junkie. So guys, if you want to support me and this channel as well, feel free to become a supporter. What do you get? Right now you get early access to all of my scheduled videos and the standard YouTube shenanigans like badges etc. And on my Discord you get the supporter role and with that comes access to exclusive supporter text and voice channels. The special honor of being the very first is gone now, but you will also have a special place in my heart, that's for sure. See you in the next video or stream, bye bye.